In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who came once to win our salvation, and who is coming again to bring all his people to that final redemption, dear fellow hearers of God's word. Are you an optimist, or are you a pessimist? Do you look upon things in life in a, in a negative way? Or do you look upon things in this world in a positive way? I read a rather interesting, somewhat humorous statement that tries to explain the difference between an optimist and a pessimist regarding outlook on this world. And it goes like this. You've got to kind of listen. An optimist says... This world is the greatest place, and there's no better place than this. The pessimist says, I hope that's not true. Think about that. Think, if you're looking for lasting joy, lasting life in this world, and that's where you think you're going to find it, then you will be sorely disappointed. In many ways, there are some things that go on in this world that, that really make us wonder whether there's any hope. Think of what has just happened this fall in our own country. A hurricane slams into Florida, wiping out towns, killing people, leaving thousands homeless. A fire rages in California, destroying acres, property, over 88 people killed and hundreds still missing. Just the other day, an earthquake strikes Alaska, not causing a lot of damage, but creating the threat of a tsunami that could crash the coastline of that state. And then you just hear the report that the life expectancy in America has gone way down because of the dozens that die daily from the opioid overdose, or because suicide is increasing among young people because they see no hope for their future. And these things can happen to us too. Maybe something that has happened in your life or, or in the life of someone you know, and it creates a pessimistic outlook on life, and we begin to wonder, is there any hope in this world? Well, that's why we celebrate Advent. Because we know that's why Jesus came. He came to bring hope to a hopeless world. And what we're going to learn this morning as we take a brief look at the Gospel lesson is the way in which we can see that hope is if we watch. Watch. And what are we to watch? Watch for the signs. Watch the scriptures. And watch the Savior. Jesus and his disciples had just visited Jerusalem. The disciples called Jesus' attention to that magnificent building. They were all excited. The Messiah had finally come. He was even walking in the temple. And they were thinking, surely something good is going to come to this earth. But then Jesus had to burst their bubble. He had to break the news. Not only would the temple be destroyed, and not only Jerusalem laid waste, but this world was going to become more wicked, and finally it was going to be destroyed. But God was going to send some signs. And the Gospel lesson begins with the conclusion of Jesus' discussion about those signs. And through a parable about budding trees, he calls them to watch. Watch for those signs. He said, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. And on the earth, nations will be in anguish, in perplexity, at the roaring of the sea and the surging waves. People fainting from fear and expectation of the things coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. 
these words of our Savior seem to militate against the hope of many people in the world. You see, mankind would like to make this world a perfect place, a heaven on earth, if you will, where there would be no more war, there would be no more crime, there would be no more violence, but only peace between all nations, food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless, and clothes for the naked. But we know, as Jesus says, that will never happen. At least not worldwide. Even though we as Christians would want those things in this world too, and we work for them. But Jesus told his disciples, this world is not going to get better. It's going to become worse. Wickedness and crime will not be wiped out. It will increase. And those words of our Savior don't seem to create hope unless you watch the signs. Jesus says, watch the signs. And even though the rest of the world is going to be terrified by those signs, He does not give us those signs to strike terror in our hearts. He said, watch for them. And when we watch for the signs and we see them, they will create hope. What hope? Jesus explains that with each passing day, the day gets closer for when Jesus will come back in glory and bring all his people to the final redemption. That's why he spoke these words of hope. When these things begin to take place, stand up. Lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Not only is this world going to be destroyed, but everything else. But there's one thing that will last beyond this world, and that is the enduring Word of God. Jesus said, truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So, so what does it mean that God's word will never pass away? And what does it mean by this generation? There are a number of different ways to understand it, but by generation, Jesus is really talking about those generations that live in the last days, and we are. But he said, even though the world's going to pass away, my word won't. And that means whatever God has said in his word, it's going to happen. And that's why we gather in Advent. Because it gives us opportunity to grow in our hope by watching the scriptures. What do we do during Advent? We go back to the pages of scripture and we watch again how God fulfilled every promise about the Savior. About how he was going to be born of a virgin. Born of David's line. Born in Bethlehem. About how he was going to come with healing his wings for the blind and the lame and the sick and the dying. And how he himself was going to suffer and die and rise to win our salvation. That's what we do during the season of Advent. We watch the scriptures to see that not one word will pass away. And that gives us hope. Because if God kept every promise regarding the Savior, He's going to keep every promise to us the same. And that gives us hope. And this is the hope that only God's eternal word can create in our hearts. That's why we watch. But that eternal word not only creates that hope in our heart, it also guards that hope. Jesus said, Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness. That's what dissipation can mean. And the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen 
and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. I don't know about you, but when I read those words, they can strike terror in my heart. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. And the reason why is because I so often fail to do what Jesus tells us to do here. I don't always watch as I ought. I don't always pray as I ought. And unfortunately, because I have a sinful heart, sometimes I do get caught up with the sinful things of this world, and I partake of them. And then I worry and I wonder, will the end come on me like a trap? And when I look at all the things I do in failing to live the way my Savior wants us to live, I then fear, will I be able to stand before the Lord on judgment day? And maybe you feel that way sometimes too. But dear friends, when, when those things frighten us, that's the time to stop looking at ourselves and to watch our Savior. You watch Him. And watch what He did for you and for me. Watch in the Scriptures how He came from heaven and became our brother in the flesh. Watch how He obeyed His Father's will perfectly for us. And then watch how He died on the cross suffering our punishment. And then watch how He rose from the dead proving that God accepted His payment for our sins and proving that he conquered the grave for us too. And then believe. Believe that all he did is yours. And then be confident when that day comes, by God's grace through faith, you will stand before your Savior and you will hear the most amazing words as he says to you, Come, receive the inheritance prepared for you before the foundation of the world. That's not human optimism. That's our Christian hope. And Jesus is the one who brings it. Amen.